Welcome to The Art of Comics. My name is Andres Salazar. This is The Art of Comics and I'm here with a good friend, Ariel Celestino. He's my special guest. I'm excited to have you here, buddy. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so today we're here in Ariel's like cave of wonder and, <laughs> and, art, and art awesomeness. We're going to talk comics. Specifically, we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to Ariel's heart and mine as well, Heavy Metal Magazine. This magazine, um, because it's a magazine, it avoided the comics code. Yeah. Right? Uh, go ahead and just like break down a little bit about the history of Metal Hurlant and how that all started. Okay, Thank so uh, when I became aware of heavy metal yeah. in the 1970s, I was uh, you know, young kid, uh, exposed to uh, you know, Marvel Comics. So when I saw this thing as, mm -hmm. as a young lad... <laughs> With all its it, 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 its amazing art, yeah. uh, it blew my mind. It was oh, yeah. it was from another world. I was yeah. used to seeing like Jack Kirby and Neil mm -hmm. Adams and stuff like that. And uh, when I discovered this, it opened up my eyes and my heart to like European comics. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, most people know heavy metal. They know that, uh, you know. Uh, one of the first American appearances of, uh, I guess, guys like Mobius, Drew yep. Bay, yep. Uh, Richard Corbin, who's an American yep. artist, was a big contributor to heavy metal yep. too. Uh, and uh, the way this magazine came about, from my understanding, is there was a European magazine called Metal Hurlant, yep. which is basically screaming metal. I guess mm -hmm. this is a, the, the direct That's translation. Right. Uh, and it's a science fiction anthology magazine mm -hmm. uh, that was started by a group of artists who were known as uh, Les Humanoids Associates. My French is horrible, so please excuse me. <laughs> right. And that, that included Mobius, that included right. uh, Philip Droulet. Uh, I don't know if Enki Bilal was also a part of it, but I, I know that Droulet... He does get into it, yeah. He, I know that, that Droulet and Mobius are really close friends. Uh, and uh, just recently saw the Mobius... Not recently, a couple of years ago, saw the Mobius documentary. You ever yeah. Seen that? Oh yeah. It's yeah. Totally so you get yeah. a little bit of what Philip yeah. Drelay is about too, yeah. and his personality, and he talks a little bit about there about his friendship and how they sort of pushed each other, uh, you know, to to just uh, to improve and expand. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, so basically, a uh, a couple of. Uh, I don't know what was the guy's name. Uh, Le Le Leonard, uh, his name was Leonard um, Mogul. Was basically working for um, National Lampoon. Yeah, he went to Paris. Right, and uh, in Paris he saw this magazine. Yeah. right, and that's kind of like, and he decided I'm going to translate this. Yeah. So originally the first issues are is basically the translation. Yeah, of this French magazine, and then later on several, several, right? several of it, the issues are like so, like, so this is like number. Uh, two of Metal Herlot and all this right. stuff. There's Arzak in the air. Yeah. Like, so it goes on. I think the first yeah. 10 issues are largely reprints right. of Metal Herlot. Right. And then and then later on, that's when they get Corbin. I think I think yeah. that's when they start bringing the Americans into the magazine. Yeah. I think from what I understand. Corbin was doing a lot of underground stuff. Yeah. All, uh, Fantagore Press was yeah. his self publishing, basically. Yeah. So, uh, and if anyone's not familiar with. Richard Corbin like drop everything and go yeah, like you gotta go Google see, yeah, the heck out of him because yeah. he is he's yeah. amazing not only an amazing color artist but brought like a new level of color which we'll get into because there's oh, yeah, plenty of examples this. of that in the, in the first issue yeah um, it, also I love his pen and ink work which it, is it's very different and yeah completely skilled in both areas yeah but like completely yeah uh and he's done some films if you go yes. on youtube you can see some like really out there experimental films yeah. and really experimenting with with d different techniques yeah. of uh, so catalan communications was a company that richard corbin worked for which okay. was ma which made industrial films okay. so that's where he got uh -huh. his filmmaking sort of experience there you go so he did some li limited animation for industrial films yeah and those films that he worked on, I think Dark Planet is yeah, one of them. Right. And then there was actually a really uh, early version of Den that he, he tried to really? do. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's, wow. it's got that some animation. Be, cool it's it's on the yeah. internet. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, so he got some some filmmaking animation 
hands-on yeah. experience there, and then he would go in after hours and work on his own stuff. Yeah. For me, heavy metal, I, I kind of was first, I first experienced this magazine around 1990, 91, 92, around there. Yeah. Uh, so I was just graduating high school, and uh, there was a comic shop in Fresno called Wonderland, and it was just, it was the classic comic book shop back yeah. in the days where it's just a wreck. Yeah. Like, it was just boxes, oh, yeah. stacks of books. It was just a wreck. That's a rarity. I know yeah. of a couple still that exist, yeah. and, and but back in the it's day, rare. Yeah, 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 back in the day, it was just a wreck. And it yeah. was called, we called it Wayne's, because the guy, his name was Wayne, who ran it. And if Wayne, if you're watching, you're a great guy. <laughs> anyway, so he had these magazines, and I looked at this, and it just blew me away. Again, um, I didn't know what this was all about. I knew there was different arts every eight pages, so I knew there was some kind of anthology, but Din, you know, all these things just flipped my switch. Yeah. You know, it was mature, it was different, it was, it, 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 but the art, I mean, to me it was the art. It was like, whoa, yeah. you don't see this kind of stuff. So I just voraciously bought all those issues yeah. that I could. The, it, yeah. the art and also the subject matter. Yeah. Because that was the mind, like, that was like, you know, uh, that was like the mind-blowing, mind-expanding experience of finding this magazine. Like I said, it's seen traditional comics like, uh, you know, all the Marvel stuff. I was yeah. a big Marvel kid. Yeah. You know, at a younger age, I liked like Archie comics and yeah. like whatever, Casper the Friendly Ghost. I didn't right. care. I just, right. Comic stories, like right. just give them to me. So it was either humorous, funny animal stuff, mm -hmm. superhero comics, yeah. and that was that was my exposure to comics. So right. when when I I saw this, it, it just, it blew my mind. It was the first step in realizing that that uh, comic books can tell any kind of right. story. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and, yeah. and, and and use any kind of medium. And very but, imaginative. I mean, this, I mean, just the, the world building. I mean, yes. when you look at some of the Mobius stuff, you're like, I've never seen anything like this. You know, this is so different. Um, it just sparked so much interest. And that was probably also when I saw the movie, too. Yeah. So the animated movie, which I want to say that was released in the late 80s. It was, but, uh, um, yeah, mid-80s. So I rented that on VHS, yeah, and yeah. I saw that, and I'm like, what is this? And, you know, all those little vignette, little stories yeah. are issues or, or stories in the book. And, um, no, huge fan. We're going to dive into this here on The Art of Comics because this, I think, is a big part of modern comic books when you look at comic books today and you talk to those artists that are out there today they know these people very influential all these Absolutely. european like completely e even if you look at bill sienkiewicz some of the huge names in american comics they go back to topi to this stuff i mean so this is big this is important and that's what this channel's about it's about educating it's about inspiring inspiring and learning from the masters so yeah. i'm hoping that through this i'm gonna learn how to be a better artist and that's the purpose so let's uh um, let's just dive in okay everybody we're here with the very first issue of heavy metal this is the first issue april of 1977 now this big this was monthly yeah for a while until like the 80s or yeah. when it then switched over to quarterly right or was that with kevin eastman that might have been when he Started. I think that even predated his time. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. I think I think during the the I want to say like around 1984 maybe is when it switched to. Yeah, it might have been a little earlier. It might have been 82. But or I'll say like that this first ten years is yeah. the golden yeah. right. Would, would would we agree to that? Yeah, I I, I think. Um, I'd even restricted more and say like the first five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, is really that's what really yeah you, you really that, attached to those years yeah I think those uh, because like I was saying earlier I discovered it around 1980 yeah uh, and um, you know I was a teenager so yeah. when I discovered it it was like this amazing mind blowing thing and then I became obsessed with it yeah it was like my favorite comic book yeah. ever yeah so I went and tracked down all the issues yeah so I do I, 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 I'm those are my favorite through the lens of nostalgia. Right. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Let's take a look here. And as we mentioned before, uh, National Lampoon, that was uh, Leonard Mogul who kind of. Yeah. And Matty Simmons. And Matty Simmons. Matty Simmons was the publisher of, of okay. uh, National Lampoon. Okay. And he was the guy that, that 
that really was like, okay, he was the guy that I, I suppose had the power to say, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Where whereas uh, Leonard uh, was it Morel or I think Mogul. 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 You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. M O G E L. Yeah. yeah. Um, who was sort of the, the the guy who was evangelizing these yeah. European comics that it, that he found screaming metal metal Herlant. I do like this this logo. It's sort of ingenious. And, and now it's like or classic. Genius. It's just kind of a classic, oh, yeah. and I think I read something about this was taken from like a it was Iron Maiden or some sort of a homage to uh, some kind of rock band, uh, but I'm not sure. It could I'm not, be. Uh, I remember it, there was it, some it, something from you like you got remember too the 1970s was like the heyday of like yeah. logos. And, logos yeah. was the, at this time in media were the way that you created a brand. There's yeah. not all these other they weren't all these other outlets that you yeah. have now uh, yeah. of creating brands. So it was like. A, a super identifiable yeah uh logo yeah. was of the utmost importance yeah yeah for sure and the, it, this cover by uh who's this Dianette, i think okay. i'm not really f too familiar with, with i don't this see artist. i don't see the, the there may be a credit inside okay. on the credits page yeah um and the adult illustrated fantasy yeah not a comic book yeah not another, it was an adult fantasy magazine i mean i don't know who crafted that little yeah. phrase but that becomes yeah. you know the phrase that we know. And and two, the publishers who published National Lampoon were like, that was almost the same sort of target audience Were those adult? Way. Were those kind of like... Those was were there, pretty adult, because I remember like, getting a lot of... The, yeah, there there's some pretty adult Was there nudity, stuff. drawing, cartoons? There was, was some like pretty Playboy racy cartoons, stuff. There like was... The um, Dean, what's his face? There or? was a Bernie Wrightson thing that made a super huge impression around that, because it came out around the same mm -hmm. time, and it was uh, Bernie Wrightson... Illustrated it, who I really became familiar through heavy metal too, uh, okay. in later issues yeah, yeah. when he started doing stuff. Yeah. But there was a really super like risque uh, parody of Bewitched. Oh, okay. W w w like that featured like, yeah, situations we won't get into. Okay. <laughs> I want this to like okay. not get into X-rated territory, oh. but yes, very front adult. cover. Nicolette. Nicolette. Yeah, this is a who's who of some of the best artists, right? You've got Corbin, Droulette. Uh, Dione, I'm gonna mess up Dione. These Dione, I'm gonna I mess think. up these French, you know, names. Mobius. Uh, uh, Macedo is an Macedo, amazing black and white artist. Terry Brooks. Who is that, that? This is like a, an excerpt from the Sword of Shannara. Okay. So, you know, yeah. This went went before Terry Brooks, I guess, right, became, became this type of fantasy yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, fiction. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. Okay. Yeah, and this this opening thing gets yeah. into a little bit about the history of it. So okay. we're straight off the bat, when you get issue one, which I got later on after yeah. discovering this magazine, you got to see a little bit of the history, and it gets into how, right? You know, uh, it was originally a, a French magazine, right? And and you're, you're, a, and this associated humanoids should yeah. not be necessarily confused with the current humanoids. Uh, publisher, but there is a connection there yeah, because uh, they actually have rights to a lot of Mobius's stuff and a lot of this yeah, stuff. I think it's sort um, of it's sort I think of one like of the, one of the guys was involved, or so, I don't know what the the genealogy of those. Right, uh, I know that uh, Jodorowsky still does a lot of stuff. Yeah, for, and Jodorowsky yeah. Oh, was yeah. like a huge collaborator yeah. with Mobius. Yeah, and so. Uh, yeah, I think there there must be some kind of connection because yeah. the names are too close for yeah. like any the, kind of... There, I remember talking to them, and there is some connection, but I can't remember. Um... They actually... And then, and then and, Humanoids and... put out a, 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 a regular comic-sized, American comic-sized... Yeah, uh, called Metal Hurlant. Metal Hurlant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it didn't last very years. long. It but didn't yeah. last very yeah, long. Yeah, but it was anthology and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of neat. Um, some little ads. Oh, National Lampoon ad. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And then now we go in... We're just straight off... To me, this was what did it. Yeah. These colors. This is Dan. This is Amazing. Richard Corbin. Um, just, like, uh, I mean, the first thing you learn is just complementary colors. You're like, okay, I'm putting all my my blues and purples with the oranges and yellows, and, and just just the the power of just complementary right. colors. Um, Ninety percent of my color work and everything is based off yeah. this page. Like, oh it's yeah. Just like, imagine like you know coming from. You know, regular newsprint comics. What was I reading at the time? Maybe like, uh, you know, Jack Kirby, Machine Man, or something like that. I don't yeah. know what was out at this at this yeah. time. Uh, the Invaders, stuff right. like that, which are amazing, amazing comics in their own right. 
But like coming from that and then seeing comic book color. Yeah. Like this is, there's no line work here. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is fully painted stuff. Yeah. And. I don't uh, think I saw painted comics, but well, no, uh, there was Assassin. There was uh, Belsenkevich's uh, yeah. Electro Assassin. So See, I, for I me, had that seen came later. some. Yeah. So I got this in the 90s. So for me, I had seen some painted books like, um, you know, John Muth's, yeah. you know, his book yeah. or uh, Kelly tough. Williams or, sure. you know, some of those guys. Kit, yeah. Kit Williams, I meant. Kit, Kit Williams. Williams. Amazing so, too. yeah, we need to talk about those yeah. guys. <laughs> those are great. But, you know, those are almost like fine artists who like dabbled in sequential art. But this was like, um, yeah, this is just brilliant. Uh, and I would love to see the originals. Do you know anything about the originals? Like um, what size you so worked in? Are they bored? Is it, is it paper? I don't know. I, I think that he worked the standard two up. Okay. I think. Uh, but he had a super interesting way of working and doing his colors. He would, he would, uh, he would do, create the work uh, in black and white, using mm -hmm. markers and Prismacolor pencils and Rapidograph for 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 contours and and deep blacks, and uh -huh. then he would take uh, like acetate and do color separations, but with an airbrush. So mm -hmm. he wasn't cut, you know, cutting out like amberlith and like right. like you would do in traditional yeah. American comics at the yeah. time. Yeah, and, and do color separations. He was doing color separations but with an airbrush wow and then using the copy camera which is the camera that you used to use to to or i guess you still use them to photograph uh you know art if you're right. reproducing yeah physical art yeah uh and use that as part of his t tool set yeah it's it just stuff is amazing and this also was like evocative because you're seeing full-on full-on hairless uh, dongs and bald guys and titties yeah, and all that uh, kind of stuff. This was all new um, for me. You know? For me, it was too. And like, yeah, I, you look know, at I, this. I, this is great. I love these colors. So how strong the vibrancy of these these colors here. They're just like you're saying. This was this was airbrush or or acrylic. Or well, washes yeah. Well, or? all kinds of like I'm saying, all, kinds, all of kinds of things. Like like so the the. Um, there's a, let me pull this out for yeah. a second. This is a book that I got, like, I don't know, it was a long time ago. So there's a little article in the back that discusses how he does the art. Uh, You're good. And you can see oh, okay, yeah. that, that it shows some, it's a very brief article, but it sh shows an example and it goes completely into his method oh. of, uh, and I think I've posted these to Instagram and posted okay. them to like Twitter and stuff like these yeah, pages. Yeah, right here, black and white mark contour lines are done with a rapidograph, yeah, exactly. right? And black areas. If you don't know what a rapidograph is, here's one. <laughs> these are, I I have this exact one. Yeah. I love these, but they're a pain in the ass as well. These are these but, are but better this. for me than the coronars. They clog less than the coronars. I do but. like I do like them more than the coronars. But I mean. This is a true man's weapon. It's, Not no micron here. Yeah, <laughs> Disposable I micron. I love using them, but yeah. they're so frustrating they when they get clogged. I do. They, they, I do love the line, but yeah. So he's using repeated graphs and markers, like you said originally. To do the modeling. Yeah. And then uh, when he gets into, uh, there we go. Yeah. Here's, yeah. When he gets into, he uses overlays, like I'm saying, like uh, acetated overlays. When he gets into it, I wanted my copy camera to be a creative tool, uh, not just an assembly line tool. Wow. And I wanted it to be an extension of my art through the camera. Yeah. So I spent months and years developing this technique. Yeah. I don't think it's a great technique, but it's, uh, I think it's I don't a great think, technique. I, but I don't think <laughs> he does it anymore. I don't, he doesn't do it this way anymore. He does I digital stuff. Digital, right? Well, so, now, uh, now stuff that he does is more work for hire stuff. Like he did a lot of right. stuff with uh, Hellboy, Wars, which or, is yeah. probably what most people know him Rat nowadays God for. Some, some yeah, like, some more. and uh, his daughter actually is a colorist for him. Oh, really? Yeah, she's a she's a huh. artist too, uh, and she does s some that's amazing cool. color work. Yeah, so cool a little book. aside. Yeah, that's too. a good little book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, love this color, and this is a, um, you know, a classic superhero tale in a way or or a um yeah. fantasy what do you, what do you call would, fulfillment what do you call like, like adolescent uh, fulfillment what do you call those you oh, know yeah, what I mean yeah. like, those, well, like you know he's a nerdy little dude who goes in this fantasy world he's super strong he's all these hot Superman chicks kind of he's going to beat them up and I, whole, I, I, I you know i relate this to stuff like uh Edgar Rice Burroughs like like this, John Carter of Mars yeah that, this that's was out of control 
Like, this is how, like, how do you do that? Like, that how do you like do a photograph. Yeah, yeah. How, well, and how do you, you know, the idea of this. Warping it. Yeah, warping it Fish like Fish lensing it to so a certain degree. So cool. And this yeah. is an amazing image, too. Yeah. Like yeah. the sort of the Aztec, Aztec yeah, yeah. Mayan kind yeah. of influence. Yeah, no one else was kind of using those cultures to no. to decorate and to populate. Yeah, really neat. This yeah, beautiful I depth. Yeah. I mean, but, but then he also he, he also has this almost very simplistic features. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? When he'll draw, he'll he just be very detailed, but then he'll just like a cartoonish, you know, eyes and lips or fingers. Well, and, you know what I mean? Like a very sure. uh, bubbly or, or like uh, what comes to mind immediately. And I know there's a lot of other examples of it, but like Shiro Masamuni. Who do right. like in like Ghost in the Shell? I know he does this a lot. He'll he'll go from a very serious rendering style, you know, to something absolutely cartoony and ridiculous. Yeah. So he's using, he's he's not setting these limits for himself. Yeah. Like if the, if you need a moment of levity, it's okay to break the style a little bit and like yeah. go off into a, a little bit of a different direction. Yep. And the color ties it all together. That's what yeah. ties the more photorealistic stuff to the more cartoony styles, and yeah. it's all rendered in the same style. Now we moved on to the next story. This is uh, who's Drulet. Phil Drulet. Yeah. So I've never seen his black and white. I'm used to his his painted stuff. Yeah. But so, now, now that I look at it, yeah, it does look like his stuff. Yeah. Who is Drulet? May be my. Is that your fave? Uh, top, top, I mean, top three. I know I speak blasphemy, but <laughs> I think he. I think I may like him better than Mobius in a lot of ways. And and it's never a competition. Okay, wait a minute. Stop the camera. Stop the camera. No, no. It's not a competition, and it's I get it's it. an opinion. He's everybody's got energy. Got I like his lines. You know, he's a, to it, me, he's it, a pure brush. cartoonist. He's right. not using photo reference for this. Right. I have nothing against photo references. Right. I'm super dependent on photo reference because. A lot of times I need to see how hands work. I need yeah. to see how clothing sure. folds, like, yeah. you know, and, and I'm by no means, you know, yeah. anywhere near this level. But but the pure cartooning aspect of it, yeah. the sort of, and I love cross-hatching. I'm a sucker for cross-hatching. Yeah. There's, there's something about the neurosis of cross-hatching that I love. And I forgot the name of these guys doing this. This You can find the collected volumes of Conquering Armies. Uh, this looks great. It, it is great, this, and the storyline's amazing. To me, it's it's almost like an O. Henry style story about conquering armies. About this almost from, for some reason this page reminds me of like a Hal Foster, like a, yes. like a Prince yeah, Valiant. Sure, you know sure. what I mean? Like I don't know why, but I just I'm getting like maybe it's made on horses. Yeah, is, I haven't seen that like connection, Fo- but I absolutely I, see it. I see it. that kind of a Hal Foster kind of vibe to. Uh, well, it's pen and ink, this. Yeah. photorealistic. Yeah. Uh, you know, style. I have some of those fanographics reprints of the, you know, uh, the, the like Prince Tarzan Valiant. or, or Prince the Valiant. Valiant. Yeah, yeah. Just so yeah. Good. I haven't seen so those. I'd love good. to see that. Yeah, I'll have to bring those next time. Those are great. Yeah, Hal Foster's somebody that took a while for me to like reach see, the see, maturity yeah. level. Yeah. I guess to no, see the I appreciation. Just got into I, it. I, I, yeah. I brushed it off for a lot of years. Oh, this is great. This yeah, is it's really beautiful. great. Just to create these, just design. There's so much work that goes into making comics that people don't think about. It's you. Got, there's all this pre-work. It's sure. like a pre-production of a film. Sure. You have to design the costumes, the characters, the settings, and and nowadays people doing it in 3D. Even they're like really building yeah. out all these things like a bible, like a production yeah. designer so a bible lot of, l- to lot just of my- create this. You know, they're not just putting this on. They're, they they got to figure this out. How does it look? And how did the light hit it? And you know, yeah, this is not this work. guy's first drawing. You know, it, it, it's <laughs> right? like this. this yeah. he spent years and years. Yeah, developing this sort of you know really refined kind of style. Yeah, and the stories are amazing. Well, this is interesting. Yeah, this little, it's, like, uh, they dropped it out. We were looking at Lone Wolf and Cub, and a lot of talking about how a lot of manga <clears throat> sort of. Uh, yeah. Drops a different kind of grayscale color. Yeah. You know what? I don't know if that's like a printing error. Yeah, I don't know if it is. I wonder if it is. It, it, it kind of, I kind of feel like it is. Let me check uh, against this other copy that I have. It's kind of weird. I I could almost, I it it yeah, makes no sense yeah, for I don't it to know. be... Story, storytelling wise, I'm not sure if that really works. Page 21. Boom. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a printing error. error. Okay. So... Yeah, Somebody there's, left there's it out in the sun too long. So something. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> no. That's kind of strange. That copy's huh. old and I've yeah. reread it a billion times. Yeah. Well, comics need to be read. Yeah. I believe that strong. Yeah, this is great. The textures here. It's really neat. Just all I mean, someone's sitting here drawing. This has moss. This is like a yeah. 
a Stephen Bissett type of deal, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. where he's drawing all these, all this moss stuff. That alone uh, is a, is a neat talent skill. Well, like, in, what do you think? Like two times up, he's working at least. He's got to be. Maybe right? even more, possibly. Like there's it, yeah, a lot got, of detail in there. There's a lot, and this took, this here it took. Hours and hours, just this. Yeah. You know? And like you're saying, this page is designed as a whole. This is like one yeah. piece of art that yeah. everything on this page was taken into consideration yeah. to work yeah. as one. Yeah. His eyes, man, that was great. Which is... The brushwork, too. Or no, that looks like a pretty... Like a, a, a crow quill, maybe. There's a little thickness yeah. at the end yeah. of the line. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a little bit. That's great. Yeah, yeah oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's great comp. This is just really neat. Yeah, and even the even the word list pages yeah. would take you a little bit to like get through See because it. there's so much to look that at. Shadow on that nose and cheek is just really cool. It's great. That was that was another thing that impressed me about when I when I found it. Hey, look, my name's hey, Ray. <laughs> you you uh, did a book of fantasy yeah, clearly yeah. with Ray Bradbury. That, was, that would be yeah. awesome, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's Frazetta, I think. That's yeah, that's a Frazetta, Frazetta yeah. cover. Um, it, one of the things too at the time that I don't think <clears throat> that maybe American comics were just on the cusp of embracing more things like more design work, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like you know. Guys like Miller and and Bill Sinkovich later on like really sort of embraced designing the whole page as a whole yeah. as part the, of the story. Paint I know that that, yeah. that 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 was always yeah. Well, Steranko we would and Steranko, say before then, but even yeah. even even then, I don't I don't really see the marriage of graphic design and uh, and comic illustration as mm. strongly as I did in like something like Outland, which he did for, mm, yeah. which was an yeah. adaptation of a 1980 science fiction movie with yeah, Sean, Sean Connery, Connery that Sean appeared Connery. later on in, in yeah. uh, heavy metal serialized. I like this a lot too. Who's this? This Who's story this? was written by Jule, but it was illustrated by another artist. So Let's Jule was always also Yaris? like. Where, where are we? Here we go. Oh, um, Alexi. Oh, Alexi. Alexi. Yeah, I'm not Alexi. familiar with this artist, yeah. but he's also he's got a very like cool that. sort of yeah. style. I think this looks Filipino, in a way. It almost you looks. Know? It's it, it, it's it's got that uh, kind of yeah, vibe. It, yeah, it does got right a little bit of that kind of Conan-y, sword and sandal-y. Yeah. You know, the modeling of the face and stuff. Yeah. And he's doing all kinds of big thick brushes. He's using all kinds of different tools. Yeah. A lot, of texture, yeah. a lot of texture, a lot of texture. Yeah. A good place of blacks, you know what I mean? The blacks are... Spawning yeah. blacks, yeah. like... So hard. Yeah, this is like a skill that yeah. I personally have never mastered and I'm constantly yeah. learning about. Different body types. I mean, just little things like that, right? Busty chicks, thin wafy chicks. Just, yeah. Just little really details good. like yeah. that that yeah. were striking and that I probably couldn't even process at the time of yeah. like why it was so appealing to me. And I think right around that time, I started, uh, maybe a few years later, I started taking um, like life drawing classes. Mm -hmm. So I started seeing, exposing myself to uh, different body types. Not only that, but different or, styles of art. Seeing mm -hmm. other students and the way they rendered things and, and seeing, oh, this sort of like maybe more sloppy, not kind of clean approach is okay. It's right. still, it's like an artistic wow. expression in itself. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. A, and it's so different. That looks like a different style too. It looks, it, it, I mean, to me, it's to like, stuff, this is really loose. This is like super like loose. Energy, like energy yeah. by doing it quickly, yeah. like capturing energy, yeah. like a Co quick you know, sketch. Compare to that with like this, yeah. right? More Which super is like tightly very, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Like he, he, he he was doing this and like spent a whole day on the one panel. I was like, yeah, oh, like, shit, I gotta, I gotta catch get up. I gotta, I gotta catch <laughs> up. I gotta finish this my day. deadline. Yeah. I like a lot. And then, okay. Masterpiece. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> like, this, is, this is what everyone talks about, right? This, now, I mean, would you say that um, Mobius, you know, Jean Girard is one of the, you know, he's gotta be the top three, if not the most. Kind of famous worldwide artists, him Miyazaki. You know, yeah. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know how Miyazaki may be more because he's exposed because movie, to like to, to, to people outside yeah. of the the comic yeah. stuff, and Mobius may be only. It, I mean, to me, he's like the Leonardo da Vinci of comics. Like he's yeah. the the mastermind who's who's. 
who's added so much to the yeah. language yeah. and done so much work. I didn't know there's how so much, much stuff, stuff yeah, that's not been published, published here, that yeah. his estate has, his family has. You know, there's there's all there's all these companies like you know Dark Horse, yeah. uh, Humanoids, Archaea, yeah. who, that are trying to put stuff out there, or translating stuff. But there's a vast library of stuff that no yeah. one's seen, or it's only been done once, and these little books yeah. are, yeah. Um, like the recent stuff, like that Inside Mobius stuff that just came yeah. out, which he, is fantastic. He's, I guess he's just super, he must have just worked constantly. Yeah, I, mean, well, I, I mean, I can't imagine can't you getting speed. to this level <laughs> yeah. unless you're, like, you're, you're cutting out huge chunks of yeah. your life to yeah. sit and do yeah. this. and. Yeah. And meditate on yeah. what a good image is and how to yeah. achieve it. Because like this alone, this image here, to me is is as finely rendered as any any fine artist who's working in a photorealistic style. Yeah, I mean it's it's well, just amazing and, work. And where is he in his career right now with this? Because is this before? This is after like Blueberry. Yeah, he's right? done. And he's so, done so he's done Blueberry. Of pages he's by done. Now. He's done a lot and of if, stuff, right? You, if you he's, look at Blueberry, it's a different kind of style almost. Oh, oh yeah, no, Blueberry is yeah. like I, I talked about Blueberry. Blueberry is like totally yeah, yeah. different, which I love. He yeah. he changes. He he changes. Uh, was this was this before or after In Call with Hodorowski? I, I think this before, predated it. it. Yeah, I, think I think it predated it, but not by much. Yeah. But this definitely is one of his most iconic stories. Definitely I would say. his character, or, or, or you know, it's a wordless comic with yeah. uh, again like a shock ending. So yeah. very much in the tradition, in a way of like eerie comics or yeah. things like that, which I gotta think that he was looking at too. Yeah. But just the sheer imagination in this the, like the what six building? or seven page yeah. story is like what's going on? There's amazing. a dinosaur here. There's a thing. He, he's got this. Who are these zombie dudes? What you know? There's all these. Qu you're just asking questions like, what's this? Why is this? Whoa, this is exciting. What's oh? It's and this? there's no and... reason to explain yeah. it. It yeah. like adds so, to the mystery of it. Yeah. So good. Uh, did he color this too? You know? Do you know? Did he do his? Colors he did a lot or... of. His, he did a lot of his own coloring. I, I, love, I, I, I am these like ninety percent like, sure that he did. Colors. That he did color this stuff yeah i don't think it was like a division of labor with mm -hmm. this kind of stuff he uh, he was and i don't mm. even know that he used assistance we need, we need, like the, a, we like need the, an artist edition yeah. oh my god <laughs> that imagine? would be so you imagine awesome yeah. that's great he's pointing to the neck and his hand is moving <laughs> wow. that's and the great. beauty yeah and then Revealed. this is um Masito or Makito? Mas I, I don't know how I'm Masito. butchering his name, but uh, yeah, Makado, Makado. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. know if it depends if it's Spanish or French, French right. <laughs> right? And so this this, this, is, this looks like airbrushed. Yeah, right? it's it's black and white, but a lot of airbrush and and, and hmm. a lot of this kind of stuff was going on during the seventies, right? So seventies, yeah. this was not so far outside right. of what was going on, especially in like. Uh, kind of. Album cover art, yeah, stuff like that. You know, it, it was yeah. the, or like headshot posters that you'd see at the time. Yeah. Oh and wow. Like, yeah, that's some that's amazing. That's cool. That's really neat. Super fun stuff. Like, what do all those antennas do? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like so great. Yeah. And then he's got the spacecraft, similar sort of. Got a little Viber robots. Yeah, a lot of airbrush work. So yeah. he went back in there and over his line work. That's so brave. Guess, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you're <laughs> so sacrificing crazy. it, <laughs> sacrificing to the gods of the the airbrush. I you, use an airbrush very rarely, do, so I'm not good at fun. it. But um, I've screwed up many a painting oh, yeah. by the damn thing sputtering yeah. out, or you know, I'm just not. I'm just I don't use it enough to like be yeah, a master it's, at it. You got it's, 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 a, it's a tool that requires a lot, a lot of, of time, I think, to, to develop master. a skill to yeah. like really get it going. Yeah. And here is this just a prose piece? It's just an excerpt from the upcoming yeah. book of the, you know that was brand oh, new with Brother Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Uh, wow. Amazing. Uh, That's a guy who um who So this really was crossed the, over the in brothers. A lot of ways. Oh might be at the time they were still working together or oh. i don't know if they still work together or, or oh, don't yeah it's, a short little piece yeah, it's just like a couple yeah. pages i think it's continued yeah 
Like that's what they would do to promote books that were coming out. Right. They excerpt them in uh, in magazines. Magazines. Yeah. And now we're already issue one, and we're already yeah. starting to pump out material. I, I mean, they probably merch. they probably knew from their experience with National Lampoon. And yeah. Such, and, I, hey, I got to think. Uh, shirts sell. This is a way to make some bucks, and we're gonna already start the merch. Yeah. Machine I didn't have going. the money at the time, or I would no. have definitely gotten one of some those. Some of these would be real. That one would be By great. Julie would be cool. Yeah. It'd be, yeah, that'd be this some This is the fun. Mobius piece right here. Yeah, that'd be really... It'd be cool to look on eBay to see if you can find any of these yeah. for X amount of dollars. Voss is an... Uh, uh, no, uh, Michelle. Uh, well, yes, Voss is the guy that inked this. This gives me a, a kind of a alt comics, you know, but San very Francisco art deco vibe. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, uh, Rick you know? Griffin kind of, kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Who I love. Shout out to Rick Griffin. I do like, I do like the, the, the pointillism. Super. Super clean inking style, yeah. like those bold, thick lines. Yeah. Like, this is probably as yeah, close exactly. to American comics yeah. inking style at the time. It's very, I could see this guy like inking somebody like Kirby and doing like mm -hmm. a fantastic, it almost looks like Chick yeah. Stone kind of yeah. big, thick brush inking. I like this though. Look, I, I love it. Wonderful that. stuff, man. All the, and the all detail, this different like, stuff's going on. Almost like a wood, not, not wood, would it be like a Jim Woodring maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe Jim not. Woodring does like really does super stuff, detailed yeah. ink stuff too. And he does mm -hmm. use a lot of this like stuff for yeah. gradations. Yeah. And very textured kind of stuff. Yeah. Very meticulous kind of very rounded lines mm -hmm. yeah. to show volume. Yeah. Still have the little uh, certificate. It's like a, hey, you're gonna get eight dollar deduction from your subscription price. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't have this delivered to my house. My mom would oh, not. Uh, she would, <laughs> would, she would not dig it. Yeah, I bet. So I had to uh, get it at the shop. Now, was this sold at comic shops when you got it? I yeah, I mean, when you, you said you were I 13. got it off the newsstand. Oh. Where there were just like a Seven Eleven or someplace. Not even the Seven Eleven, man. Well, I was or, living or in New like York that. at the time, so and living in Manhattan, and there would be newsstands every couple of corners, so you okay. could pick up all your magazines. They sold some comics there. Yeah. There were there were a couple of like comic shops in the city. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's a few, but yeah. And so this is uh, how do you say his name? Mazieras. Yeah, I'll go for that. Right? Mazzieras is the guy that did uh, Valerian. Oh, okay. And this is this is another just like a beautifully rendered. Yeah. This is like a little short story, but like th th this spacecraft is just oh, like that's amazing. Great. The lighting. Yeah, that's really cool. The lighting on uh, this guy's face, mm -hmm. like just freaking amazing. This yeah, is another a lot of colors with some. It, actually, this reminds me a little bit of uh, Jimenez. Oh yeah, I can you see that. You know what I mean? Sure. So just a little, just a little bit, a little maybe just because it's a so detailed and too. It's the same yeah. kind of. And then, uh, yeah, just amazing panels. The story is kind of it, it, is kind of cool. I like, it's like but all this neat technical, you know, just all this amazing like stuff. This is great. This is almost is like a Japanese like machinery style mm -hmm. like rendering stuff so you can see like like this stuff came out before both well, alien came out in like 79 or something like that yeah around that time so yeah. you can see how really scott pulled a lot of influence yeah. from this magazine like there's yeah. like there's like you know a large part of his production design that he pulled directly from this magazine of various artists this is oh, one of my favorite panels. Did you know That's that he like was amazing. an artist too? He oh, actually, he's an amazing artist. He was an uh, art director, or he, he, yeah, he, he was he, an artist. He was an art director. Before. He started yeah. in, in advertising. Yeah. He was an art director, yeah. and then he moved on to directing commercials. And some of the some of the coolest stuff that's related to to uh, Alien and him directing is are his uh, Ridley Grams, they call them, and which are basically his storyboards. So he storyboard. Oh, really? Alien himself in its yeah. entirety, and you can find. So them it on. wasn't uh, Geiger or Geiger not the just, storyboards. Okay, he would just do the creature. He did creature the creature, creature creation, design, so. and then he had Ron Cobb, I think, do the the Ron Cobb and Mobius. Mobius did a fair like he designed like yeah. the the uh, the astronaut the the extra 
the, the particular the scoops, EVA the, the, the suits and yeah, stuff, yeah, the yeah. astronaut suits and right. things like that. Okay. Ron Cobb did some of the the, the design of the, the spaceship. Huh. This is nice. This is very different too. Yeah, I like it's this. Like, uh, it's like and it's pasted with all these different textures and right, using like all using these like photocopying, yeah. using like drawn stuff. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is like of a new style. Yeah, and, for the time. You and know? again, but again, it's very like it, no, it's no, not limited by like oh, I can only use these tools or yeah. like you know that's something too that I wanted to touch on with like uh, like Corbin's comments about using the copy machine as an extension of his art and as just a tool. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the same way that I feel about the computer. Cat's working, like, digitally. Right. Like, there's people that do it well and people that don't do it yeah. well. It's because it, it's like a pencil. Yeah. You know, using a computer to do stuff is not cheating. It, it does facilitate stuff, like having yeah. undos when you do a, a crappy line, throw yeah. a crappy line, and being able yeah. to undo is great. Yeah. Being... Being able to iterate things really quickly yeah. is great too. But if if you can't tell stories, it doesn't matter what what doesn't tool mean. you're using. Yeah. You still got to put it down. You still got to put the line you know, down if it's a screen is, or a that yeah. juxtaposed with something like this and the cat using like photocopied stuff yeah. and it's it, it shows you the range that you can work in that 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 there is no real limit to it that you can use whatever yeah. you want to do use to tell a story. You know. The only downside I see to digital is the kind of archivist in me realizes that, you know, we're not going to get artist edition volumes yeah. of a lot of the, the most, you know, the last 10 years of books because they, we don't have them. They yeah. are digital. And so, so you lose the process because we don't, there's no way to like do an artist edition of all the files or the layers, you know, so we don't get to see you know the roughs necessarily uh, some, you, we you can't can. on some but but People i feel like do you that. do lose generally speaking there's no you're physical not gonna, you're not gonna have access to yeah. like the pencil and the rough some people keep them but a lot of times it's like okay there you go yeah it's you know it, it's all it's all mashed up in the final file or you know we yeah, merged I, all the layers I, I, I or whatever. You. i mean it exists to, to it somewhere exists digitally and yeah. it doesn't exist physically and i don't know if that's a thing of like me growing up in a different era where because yeah. i'm still very much uh a, a fan of physical books oh yeah i well, do clearly. buy uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a little out of control actually uh but but i love i love them as art objects yeah i, yeah. I find like a like a, a book that that even even old paperbacks can be that way. Mm -hmm. Like the way that people used to take care and like uh, do painted covers and stuff like that. Some of that stuff's amazing. This is like great. this is another really weird. I don't think I've ever read this, this but I've great. looked through it so many times and I almost like it better not reading it because it's just so freaking weird that I don't I don't even care what's going on. It's just like Really yeah, cool. like yeah. It, like seeing this for the first yeah. time and going, holy! What the hell? Yeah, yeah. what are these guys? Okay, okay. Well, this okay, is ninety six yeah. continued, and then another huge, huge influence yeah. on every who should be a huge influence on everybody is Von Baudet. Right. And uh, at, at this time, I was also kind of into graffiti. Not kind of into graffiti. I was like. I grew up in the early the 80s places. in New York. I, yeah, <laughs> right. I did a little bit of that. Uh, but, um, you know, I'd be, I'd ride the trains. It was the heyday of guys like Z Scene, Zephyr, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just these amazing graffiti artists that were elevating graffiti from just tags to yeah. amazing pieces of, to of to art. art. Murals and, yeah. Murals. They were, yeah. they were really muralists, yeah. in, in, yeah. in my view. Uh, yeah. Uh, who were like super talented artists. So, yeah. Stuff and like they really. used, a lot of those cats were very much influenced by Von Baudet and they would do very Von really? Baudet characters. You'd see Cheech Wizard on trains really? and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Von huh. Baudet was a huge influence on graffiti. Huh. I didn't and know the connection of seeing like this comic and then seeing graffiti with like Von Baudet characters was always like, I always, uh, th those two things occupy like a similar space in my mind. Yeah. What, what can we say about this? I'm not really familiar with this artist, but it is, it, it is really sort of like this 
innocent yeah. looking style yeah. that's talking about I like this a lot. Like sort of that to me it's like this sort of right at that age yeah. where you're coming starting to coming become a teenager stuff, yeah. and you're uh really neat yeah yeah it's beautifully rendered stuff and it's it's very much like you could see somebody doing like a a, a young adult or like yeah like this uh, is a great little image there it's great design it it, it is beautiful yeah. and it's just like not restricted by like preconceived notions that like i yeah. guess american artists at the time had like everything was very sort of uniform and everybody was trying to emulate like a select few artists yeah like these guys were m more uh auteurs and mm -hmm. they really like wanted to go after individual styles which is another thing that i found really impressive and and was really eye-opening yeah for me very cool yeah i dig it and then back oh. cover yeah. delay back cover that's a masterpiece of like insanity yeah this stuff is so great well that was issue one of heavy metal this is great, and you can find these. Yeah, you can, you can find, find them these. On eBay. You they're find them they're not that hard, and I don't know how much these go for. These reader copy versions of one, but it's probably not yeah. crazy. You could find one in, in yeah. crappy condition yeah. with a torn cover like this, maybe ten bucks, maybe. Yeah. And know. it's great. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. This is uh, the Art of Comics. I'm Andre Salazar here with uh, Ariad Celestino, and uh, keep listening. Check out the other videos. Subscribe, like all that stuff. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye.